Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. This is Ozark Living and in today's video and topic, we're actually talking about the worst things about living in the Ozarks. Let's check it out. All right, hey guys, my name is Scott, and if this is your first time visiting the channel, welcome, thank you, and while you're here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button along with that notification bell because every Tuesday and Thursday, I'm dropping a new video telling you everything you need to know about moving to or living in Lake of the Ozarks. We're also a group of licensed lenders and agents, so as much as I love making these videos, I would love even more to help you with your lending or real estate needs. So that number popping up below, I am the guy who will answer the phone calls, the text messages, and the emails. If there's a question, a scenario, or just something I can do, please don't hesitate to reach out and let me know. In the meantime, this video, we actually wanna talk about the worst things about the lake and not normal, right? Because the majority of the time, we're talking about all the great things about this area and you know, the lake, the boating activities, recreational stuff, cost of living, all of the highlights as to why people live here or why people are moving here. But as we're talking to more folks, they keep asking the question after we get past all of the good stuff and it's, hey Scott, tell me what I don't know or tell me maybe some of the bad things about living in the Ozarks. And so we just wanted to highlight a few things, but real quick, let's go ahead and pull up a map and figure out where we are. So when you pull up the state of Missouri, you're gonna have Kansas City on one side, St. Louis on the other. Go to the middle, go down, and that's where you're gonna find the lake. When you look at the lake, you're gonna realize it looks like an ancient Chinese dragon. So we're always reverting to different parts of the lake to different parts of the dragon. When you think about the lake, that's gonna be kind of the first topic of conversation, which is the reason why a lot of people are coming down here. So this is a very high traffic tourism area from your Memorial Day to Labor Day. So that is the peak season. And one of the things to think about and consider is just that, it's this influx of people that come into the area to take advantage of the lake and enjoy summertime activities if you live here locally i don't know that might bug you it might not but it's something to think about because as this influx of tourism comes in there could be this feel of out-of-staters out-of-towners they're coming in and using the lake and kind of clogging up restaurants or causing traffic on the roadways using the retail stuff like as much as this area thrives and needs tourism to survive, it also could just be a thing for locals. And that'll go back to like, where do you live? And we know that towards the head, neck and belly of the dragon is gonna be the highest trafficked tourism area. And so if you live in Lakeside, Village of Four Seasons, Osage Beach, that's where the majority of the influx of people are gonna go to. The further down the lake you get, the tail, the legs of the dragon, the further away you get, the less traffic that there's gonna be. But something to think about and consider is that influx of people. It'd be almost like if you live in a college town and right before school you have this influx of students that come in, they hit all the retail stores. Again, they clog up the restaurants and the roadways. They're there for the school season. Then after school, they bounce and take off. Very similar to the Ozarks. Group of people coming in, using the amenities, loving lake life, and then they're gonna bounce and take off. So that's just something to think about and consider if you're living here locally. How do we kind of manage that? How do we deal with that? Maybe where do we live to either be okay with it or maybe we don't wanna be in that area and we wanna look at something different. You know, when it comes to the tourism and the attraction of the lake, another thing that some folks don't know or haven't considered is a lot of these lakeside restaurants and tourism activities pretty much are open during that peak season, right? Again, the lake survives off of that. And so as Memorial Day comes up, all of these restaurants will start to open up and they'll be open through the Labor Day kind of weekend. But eventually, as that tourism traffic leaves, those restaurants will start to shut down. And so if you live here locally and you love a lakeside restaurant or you love an activity or a spot that you like to go, something to think about and consider is that might not be open shortly after Labor Day. And so that bugs some people, it might not bug others. Again, it's subject to each individual, but it is a tourist attraction, right? The area survives off of out-of-towners and out-of-staters, but those attractions that we all love, 
they're probably going to shut down in the winter months because there is not enough locals to keep all of those businesses going. And as we talk about businesses, that could be something to consider as well. Or a worst part about living here is you're not going to have the the big city amenities that you would have here at the lake. Now, don't get me wrong. You got all the retail stuff that you're looking for. You got everything that you need to survive. But if you're looking for a big downtown scene or, or great nightlife or you like major sporting events of, of baseball and basketball and football, it's not going to be here. It's not going to be that type of lifestyle. And if you wanted those things or like those things, you're going to have to go up to Kansas City or St. Louis or you're going to have to travel to go and get them. And so some people that are thinking about moving here that are used to living in big cities and having tons of things to do all the time easily at your disposal it's not going to be the same down here it's a different pace it's a different lifestyle it's more rural kind of remote living than it is big city feel so that could be a worse part I don't know, that could be a good part, right? That's also another reason why a lot of people are moving here is because they don't want the congestion of all of those big cities and they want a little bit more elbow space, rural environment, scenery, and things of that nature. But hey, could be a worse thing for some, maybe not others, but something to obviously talk about and consider. So with big city feel is gonna have those big city amenities, that's obviously gonna be different here at the lake and especially when it comes to maybe retail shopping. If you like to have a vast variety of a whole kinds of different type of retail shopping, you're not gonna have an abundance of that by any means. And not too long ago, they built Highway 54 and they built that for convenience, right? They built that for speed of getting around the lake and you know to ease up traffic. It's a two lane highway now where before you had to go down retail kind of row. You had to drive through all of these retail stores and in the mall and a couple of other things, right? And what happened when they built that is a lot of those retail shops, they couldn't survive business because there wasn't enough traffic. It's almost like they built that road for the convenience but they didn't think about how that was going to affect all of the retail shops. So a lot of the stores in the mall shut down. There's still some there. And again, there's still plenty of retail, but there's not this overabundance of shopping and clothes stores and other things that big cities could provide. So if that's something you need or that's a desire for you or you enjoy it, cool. Again, you might just have to go over to St. Louis or go over to Kansas City. There's plenty of retail stuff here. There's just not a, a large variety of it. So again, just something to think about and consider what some people could call the worst part of living here. Others, again, might not care. You know, and I guess comparing a little bit more to the area that we're in, which again is a rural mountainous type environment. It's the opposite of the big city feel. And so traffic and commuting around the lake is obviously different than those big cities. And a couple of things with big cities is the roadways are laid out really nicely and they're probably gridded and it's easier to get around. The Ozarks is the complete opposite. It's windy, curvy roads, it's hilly, they're gravel, it's steep, your driveway is steep. Like it can be a challenge just driving around this area and so if if driving is a challenge for you or you're not used to mountainous curvy type roads that could be one of the worst parts of living here it's not as easy to just leave your house drive to the store and come back real quick it's probably going to take a little bit a little bit more travel time and then obviously when you're traveling man you got to be like on point right you can't be wandering you can't be looking at your phone you can't be goofing around right because the roads again are very challenging and so is the wildlife you're going to have deer that are going to run out in the middle of the road or other animals that are going to scurry in the middle of the road and so you got to be paying attention to that that is going to be very different between big city and Ozark living. And another big difference in all of that is gonna be just public transportation. We know that when we're in a big city, we have access to buses or subways or light rails or, you know, again, public transportation, Ubers and Lyfts and easier ways to get around. That could be a challenge here in the Ozark. The bus route isn't gonna take you to your house. It's probably not even gonna take you close to it. So there's very limited public transportation. There's clearly no railways, no subways. Lyft and Uber is out there. And again, if you're in the heart of the, the lake in the Osage area, probably a little easier to find Ubers and Lyfts. And as you move further down the lake, probably a little trickier. But if you're somebody that's in that big city environment, you like your roadways laid out very easily. It's maybe flat, easy to get around. There is a challenge with the Ozarks and 
curvy, hilly, steep, gravel, nothing makes sense, wildlife running out at you. So it could be the worst part of living here, but again, maybe other people don't mind that or maybe they're looking for that, right? Being in the mountains and being in nature and having that type of lifestyle is, you know, maybe a, a positive for a lot of people, but sometimes could be a negative for other people. So in another thing along the sides of nature and the environment and the forest that we kind of live in, another thing to think about and consider are the worst part about living here, the bugs. Talk about it all the time, I bring it up all the time. If you're not used to bugs, creepy crawlies, whether it's spiders or June bugs or flies or whatever it could be, that could probably be the worst part of living here. However, if you have a bug guy, which we recently just discovered, it's actually not that bad. So as I've talked about bugs before on the channel, the other thing that I've realized is when we first moved down there, you know, we just moved into a property that wasn't well taken care of. And so it was covered in spider webs and spiders and little bugs and gnats and it was it was almost to the point of like hey i don't know if this was a really good option but then the more that you're there and you meet people you realize that you can have a guy come out at the beginning of the season and power wash your house right power wash it up power wash your deck power wash your dock so you get it nice and clean and then the bug guy will come out and he'll spray your property once a month and it has been night and day different so yes bugs are a thing yes you got to be used to them or you got to be somewhat comfortable with dealing with them, but there is a way to mitigate them. And by us doing our mitigation, we have realized that once you do that, you can really hardly tell. And even if you live in Lakeside and you have a dock, that was a big component too, because every time you went down to the dock, it was covered in cobwebs or there were bugs all over your boat, but they can do like this essential oils on your dock, which is super interesting. They can't spray the chemicals on the dock because of the water, which makes sense, environmental standards, but they have this essential oil type thing that they can put on there, which kind of does the same thing and mitigates the amount of bugs that are gonna be there. So some things to think about to consider, you could be in an area, bugs might not even be a problem, but if they are for you, they're gonna be a thing down here, get used to them, but there's also ways to mitigate them so it's not as bad as you might think. So hey folks, that's just some ideas or some worst things about living here. You know, again, just talking about the tourism area, the high traffic, the congestion, that influx of people that come in from Memorial Day to Labor Day. With it being a kind of a touristy destination, those lakeside restaurants and those amenities are probably gonna shut down in the wintertime. That could be a, a, a negative for you. It could be a positive. It might not even matter, but something to think about and consider. You know, some of those big city amenities that you might be used to, whether it's sporting events or shopping, retail, theater, those kinds of things are gonna be uh, fewer and far between, right? Again, if you want those things, you're probably gonna have to go to St. Louis or Kansas City. We talked about the transportation. If you're used to well laid out cities with gridded streets and flat surfaces, the complete opposite here. One of the worst part is maybe driving around curvy, hilly, gravel, steep driveways, wildlife running out in the middle of the road, something to think about and consider. And with wildlife comes the bug. So get used to them, they're here. They might be a thing for you, they might not. If they are, there are ways to mitigate them. And so, you know, we just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the worst things about living here. There's obviously a ton of positive things about living here. And of course, that's the reason why the majority of people either live here or are thinking about relocating here. And so again, I say it all the time as I wrap up, we are licensed lenders and agents. I love making these videos. I love even more to help you with your lending or real estate needs. So one more time, that number popping up below. I am the guy who answers the phone calls, the text messages, and the emails. If there's a question, a scenario, or just something that I can do for you. If there's more conversations that you wanna have about the worst things about living here or even the positive things, whatever that could be, please don't hesitate to reach out and let me know. Until then, we'll see you on the next video. Bye. along with the notification bell, because every Tuesday I'm gonna start over. All right, hey guys, my name is... Cool, you again just might have to go up to St. Lit, St. to St. Lit, St. So again, I say it all the time, right? We are licensed lenders and agents as love. So again, I say it all the time. Topics you wanna to talk about with the pros or cons. Do one more. Try that differently. So again, guys, I say it all the time. We are licensed lenders and agents. As much as I love making these videos, I love more to help you with your lending or real estate needs. So then, <laughs> jeez. Ah, oh, all right. So, so again, guys, I say it all the time.